so I can understand why you want to go over there. And I gave you the opportunity to do so. I am proud that you have stayed in here. You will learn something today. You will learn in my testimony how it's possible for you to go anywhere in your life, okay? If you have any questions, please raise your hand. You respect me, I respect you. If I have any problems, we have to escort you. The only way we want to do that is because we want to make sure you get the full programming of the session. And I'm not trying to be hard with you, it's just I have something real that you need to listen to. Trust me, it's worth it. It is worth the 50, 55 minutes you're gonna be here. I will have questions and answers towards the end of the session, and then an evaluation that you will fill out. I am a former gang member of 17 years. This is real talk. I didn't come over here to play no games and nobody paid me come over here. Those are all the positions I hold. I'm a state official for the Department of Iowa, Iowa Department of Human Rights. I'm a commissioner for the state of Iowa. Basically, I go around the state and I speak to youth. I'm a specialist in gang intervention, suicide prevention, and alternatives to youth violence. Those are the various positions I hold here in the state. I'm a transfer student from San Antonio, Texas. I went to junior college, I applied to 10 schools, got accepted to nine, and I got six scholarships. I'm gonna go through a timeline of my life so you can understand how did they get there. You, by looking at me, are not gonna be aware like that Vato ain't, he's in a suit, he's not <coughs> a gangster. But I will demonstrate to you after today, it's real talk, I've been there, done it. <clears throat> I'm gonna go rather quickly to bring you up to speed because we've wasted already eight minutes. My father was a mafioso. At seven years old, my mother divorced my father. A mafioso means somebody who was drug trafficking in the, in the gangs and in the drugs, for those of you who do not know what the word mafioso means. She didn't know that he was that. Si. Okay. My mother took me and I need you to geographically look at the state of Texas. Fort Worth is where we lived. She left me in San Antonio. She went down to where Mexico's at. She left me with my 22-year-old sister when I was seven. My dad was everything with me for me. I did not know what he was involved in, but my dad dressed just like the way I did, do now. I am now. I didn't know why. All I know is that we go to the bars, I'd sit at the stool, the cantineras would give me soda, candy, chips, and dad would go to the office and the door was swinging back and forth. You're selling drugs. My mom found out that that was the truth of what he was doing. She didn't want anything to do with that life and did not want me to have anything to do with that life. She took me down to San Antonio, left me with my 22-year-old sister. 
I probably saw my mother once per year for the next 13 years. In my mind, my mother abandoned me, neglected me, isolated me. Now, imagínate, who knows Spanish in here? I'm going to get bilingual, some of you don't. Imagínate, me dejó solo, me abandonó, me negó. What do you think that creates? Anger and hate. So imagine a young kid at seven years old, pissed off at the world, because now he doesn't have a father. Now I'm without a mother, and now my sister is my father and my mother. I'm growing up, and then I get exposed to bullying. One day going to school, I couldn't run anymore. He got a hold of me, beat me up, went to school a day later. A friend of mine asked me what happened to me. I got beat up by those guys on 4th Street. He goes, you know what, what are you doing after school? I said, nothing. I'm trying to figure out how to get home without getting beat up. I was only 11, 12 years old. Took me to the neighborhood guy, ended up joining a gang. So picture some railroad tracks. The initiation was the six guys on each side, and I'm walking down the middle. I hold my hands like this, I can't fight back. My objective is to get to the end of the line. I had to go through that line twice. I got beat down really bad, but I joined the gang. Yes? Okay, and I'm glad you asked that because I will tell you that that's the only question I will not answer. And, this, and, and no disrespect to you. But to tell you my gang affiliation has no relevance because all gangs are bad, no? Yeah. So what is the difference? I, I'm not going to pay homage to a gang that's nothing. And I'll get to that point. A month later, because I chose to pick one of these, all gangs have colors, symbols, doesn't matter. Say it loud. How much is that? 99 cents. 99 cents. So 99 cents plus tax is a dollar oh seven. A dollar oh seven. So because borrow your shoulder. They're wearing that color, and I'm wearing this color. They do a drive-by at the park. That is a gunshot wound to the ankle because the rival gang saw my other color, and they shot at me. The bandana is a dollar oh seven with tax. Dollar oh seven, dollar oh seven. So we're basically shooting at each other for two dollars and fourteen cents. You will notice it. It's got some holes here. What happened is when the bullet hit the ankle, it broke off. They didn't want to take me to the hospital. They thought I was going to get infection. It's called lead poisoning. So they got the biggest guy to sit on me, held me down on the bed, and they got cigars and burned my leg. So the lead could burn off. Overnight, I got power, respect. I've been shot now. I'm 20, 12 years old. Now I'm somebody. So I thought, I'm 12 years old. I have no family because I think that the gang is my family. I don't have no father. I have no mother. I got a sister who's raising me, but I'm angry at the world. So I join a clique. Get shot for it. But in my mind, like Mr. Benitez said, you will defend your family. This is my family at the time. You protect and you defend your family. So at 12 years old, I thought getting shot is part of the deal. Part of the deal. Do you understand what I'm saying? Getting shot is part of the territory of joining the gang. So now that I've been shot, power. But nobody's telling me it's for dollar or seven. How many of you would give your life for a dollar or seven? They were cheaper back then. Exactly. They were cheaper back then. You could probably get these for 50 cents back in the day. Listen to what I'm saying. When I say the words, me entiende, can I have y'all say, si, senor? Me entiende. Si, 
Sí, señor. I want the rest of the school to hear you. ¿Me entiende? Sí, señor. <laughs> Donald seven. Think about that. You got these guys running around here, here in Muscatine, in mi barrio, mi calle, my street, my color. They don't own the damn house on the street. They don't own the street. And they're giving their life for Donald seven. But we still don't learn. Because the gang is everything to us. It's familia. That's my, that's my God. That's my, that's my people. He shot again. Lower thigh. 16. Going on 17. But I've been shot twice. In four years, over a dollar oh seven. I'm gonna repeat that over and over and over so that you get it in your mind that you are more valuable and self worthy than a piece of gara that you can wipe your mocos with. <laughs> Me entienden? Sí, señor. Nerve damage to the left arm. <laughs> And it's unethical for me to get undressed. <clears throat> but I always have one high school student. Oh, they get I don't even know those are your kind of chats. <laughs> okay, watch out. I'm not going to strip down for you, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you how it is. <laughs> Same one. I don't need to show you the race. I didn't come here to tell you no story. At least one that's not false. This is real talk. The most important gunshot wound that I've ever endured is that one. 1996, Christmas Day. Self-inflicted gunshot wound. One more time. Self-inflicted gunshot wound. I'm tired of the streets. Ya llevo seis, siete años, ocho años de estar en las pandillas. I'm tired of the drug game. I'm tired of being homeless. I'm living motel to motel because I'm fighting for some colors that have no meaning. Why did God put me in this world to suffer without parents to deal drugs, to fight for colors, for a familia that has no meaning and no worth but a dollar oh seven? So I tried taking my own life. You ever been so angry that you don't want to live anymore? Ladies and gentlemen, I am fortunate and blessed to be standing here. It ain't got nothing to do with luck. I just told you I've been shot three times. I should not be here. I should. <clears throat> I need to find it. But because we got so animated in the last one, I don't know if I'll be able to find it. But I'm going to continue. Now imagine, <coughs> this is the consequences of choosing that life. Let's that around. The consequences of choosing that life. That's the that please. <clears throat> and it's a life <coughs> that has no meaning. But out of my wallet, I carry this. These are the names of my homeboys. Murder, suicide, and vegetable. You don't even go to the bodega, the grocery store, the vegetables just sit there. I got a homeboy that's sitting right there from tubes, tubes, because they're feeding him. <laughs> because he went to go do a drug deal, and they robbed him and shot him in the neck. Se sienta ahí como un mono. No trae vida, no life. For those of you that don't know what OD means, it's overdose. Please be very careful with this, as you can tell it's old. I have this in my wallet as a reminder of what I left, and as a reminder of what I do not want to return to.
need you to listen very carefully. Look at that. Pick one. Pick one. Okay. Now, pick one. You see the difference? Incarceration, death, downward mobility. You want to come to you and I? Come to you and I. I'm not here to preach a sermon or to sell you the University of Northern Iowa. I'm here to sell you an opportunity. And it ain't costing me nothing and you ain't got to pay nothing. You got to allow your mind to expand to say, I can go to one of these. I don't need to be like one of these. And you can say, well, Ramon, I'm not interested in becoming a gang member. <laughs> yes, but you know somebody that is. You know somebody that's affected by the streets, by the gangs, and by the drugs. It's around you. And right now in the state of Iowa, your generation, your age group has skyrocketed as far as youth violence. This is your high school. It starts here. Pick one. Junior college, technical school, university, college, skill, gift, talent. Find something you're good at and develop that skill. I used to carry a gun for a living and deal grams, ounces, and pounds. You ever think that I would ever become a commissioner for the state of Iowa for the Department of Human Rights? Hell no! They wouldn't have given it to me. But because I was able to apply my mind and expand it, because this is a powerful weapon, you are not using it to your potential. Senoritos, homeboys, sir, gentlemen, you want to fight with your hands, do it in a ring. Go join the Olympics. Do it from a proud level. Because a real person can think. Because the most powerful people in the world are thinkers. These guys end up incarcerated. You want to go to the penitentiary or to the university? Whatever you do, find it within yourself to go somewhere. I'm not saying you have to go to the university. What did I say? Well, I don't like school. I'm not good at math. That's fine. Go to beauty school. Hey, you know what, sir? I'm too short. I can't join the Air Force, but I like building things. Go pick up a welding license and go learn how to assemble planes. Me entienden? Me entienden? Si, senor. If you want to pick up a gun, do it honorably. You tell your people. You tell your peers. What do you want to carry a cuete for? You want to carry a cuete? A gun? A pistol? Do it for the right reasons. Duty, honor, country. Liberty, freedom. Why do you want to destroy lives when you can save some lives? Become some of the first Latino law enforcement officers. You want a, ban you want a bandera? Do it for something. Este jale con los mocos y la sola. This is worth fighting for. You see what I'm saying? I gave my life for a cause that had no meaning. And I'm not saying go to the military, but make it an option. Tell your peers. Porque at the end of the day, at the end of the day, <laughs> de mayo, con la ayuda de Dios, with the help of God, I will be graduated with a bachelor's in history, a minor in political science, and a certificate of peace studies. A guy from the hood, a guy from the barrio, that chose a flag that meant something. This is pride. Right now, 80% since 09, people in your age group across the state of Iowa, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're getting involved in drugs. Teenage pregnancy is high. Youth violence is skyrocketing. You're fighting over cutters. You're fighting over hate. I got Latinas that are fighting because one 
He's hating on you. Court petitions against juveniles accused of crime has leaked 80%. 80%. 16.5%. They don't know where to put you on. You know why? Because the state of Iowa doesn't have juvenile facilities. Why would they? The state of Iowa ain't known for that type of violence. Who do you think they're pointing the finger at? This is what they want to do to you. <laughs> Enforcement, investigation, monitoring, restraint. Quieren ser animales. I've never been to the Pinta Penitentiary, but I've been locked up in county many times. And there ain't no reward system. Right now, I just got this clipping two weeks ago from San Antonio, Texas. 11 year olds that are working with the carteles because they're from a clica because they want to be the next Scarface. It's a bunch of BS. It's Hollywood. Leave it there. <laughs> this guy's 14 years old. He was picked up. He has over 15 deaths <laughs> to his name. He's 14. It doesn't have to happen in Mexico. It can happen right here. Just because it's happening over there, we're not going to down Mexico because that youth is here too. I want you to take a close look at this. Young ladies, I need you to look at this very closely. <coughs> is this the guy you're going to take to present to your father? Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. But listen, that battle. As a girlfriend, they have girlfriends. Don't let the young man tell you he loves you and it's forever. <laughs> no, neta, I'm being real talk. You know, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. BS, <laughs> and let's not use vulgarity, please. Let's become scholars, we're, 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 we're scholars here. We don't need to use vulgarity. But understand, it is BS. But listen, you look at that. And I say young ladies because young men, you know what can happen overnight. Look at the difference. Tiene familia, he's got a house. Of course, he had to do it through education. Una ramfla firme, one boy's got stock and take vacations. He don't necessarily have to wear a suit. But what life are you gonna choose? You don't have to be directly that. You can be involved in that circle. And it'll suck you in. Choices and consequences. Drug distribution. Ten years from that, if we don't get you to become educated, law enforcement, social justice, criminal justice, sociology, Gonna look like this. The state is vulnerable because the generation is not choosing to educate themselves. How do you help your community? It takes one to know one, and in order to help somebody else, you have to help yourself. These are gangs, according to the National Drug Intelligence, already working with the cartels. Those gangs, two of them are already in this state. On the gang file. I'm not selling you no BS. I've literally looked at the file. Yeah, they're mentioned in other states, but two of those gangs are right here. Now, let's use your language. Hustle. I gotta get my hustle on. Accomplish me. When you ever hear a gang, hey homeboy, I accomplish a drive by today. So. <laughs> <laughs> they don't talk like that. Sabes que mamá jefita, I accomplished to get a C where I got nothing but F's in my math class. See what I'm saying? Use the language twisted. 
identify with the language where it identifies with you. I can get my hustle on. I'm going to get crunk tonight on that book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is a problem that we have with our youth. And I'm not just talking about my Latinas, I'm talking about black folk, my African American brothers and sisters. Okay, I'm speaking to you too, because you know what? You go through the same thing we do. We have something in common, it's called oppression. So don't feel that because you're the only two people of a darker shade of color that you're excluded. No, you're in an inclusive environment. See what I'm saying? You're in an inclusive environment. Do not practice discrimination when it's reversed. Right now, in Waterloo, his people are killing each other. Right now, in Des Moines, our people are killing each other. Over a flag. Know your history. Ask the question. What did Mr. Benita say? Challenge your elders. Really? Hey, sir, ma'am, why are we always talking about the uh, pyramids in Egypt? And why are we talking about the Inca, the Azteca, the Maya? That's my cultura. Why aren't you talking about it? True scholar knows his history, her history. Your people built pyramids. Your people built pyramids. Technical difficulties. <laughs> Why do my best, guys? Okay. No, uh, what's that? I never got to Mexico. I was uh, in Laredo, Texas. Do you have a charger for the computer? Oh, the charger. <laughs> well, you and I, we use solar power. But we don't have some in here, so that is your answer. Where is solar power? Orale, let's get back to the discussion. But it takes next. Crossing over. Our people weren't here. So they say. Imagine they moved the border back. Texas to Mexico. Oh, was it like At one time, yes, sir, San Antonio was Mexico until they moved the border down and they became the United States. When we came over, we crossed over. This is what I'm trying to show you here. Now we talk about our history. Chicanos and Mexicans. History. Our people can go anywhere. No boundaries. Only you limit yourself. Ustedes mismos se limitan. But you can change it. Look how nice that sounds. Latinos remaking America. Excuse me, buddy, we need your password. T-R-O, go ahead. T-R-O-L-L-E-Y-R-O-1. Now we know how to have you. <laughs> I'll change it when we get home. <laughs> I believe you will do that. <laughs> Latinos really do history. Overdose. Oh. They did too much drugs. I like, I like this book. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be on that cover. Remaking America. Latinos remaking America. Brothers and sisters remaking America. Our people, they don't tell you this in history text. Our people, our people, by looking at the stars, discovered a capital. Neta. I'm being serious. Look it up. Our people, by looking at the stars. Estamos hablando de, de tú sabes, we got the Indians running around, ¿verdad? Orale. <laughs> it's 364 days. <laughs> no, it didn't happen like that. But they lined up the stars, astrology, mathematics, to design a calendar. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> we are the first and the only cultura to make a car hop off the ground. <laughs> Become an engineer. Do not tell me you cannot become an architect. Do not tell me you cannot become an artist. Do not tell me that you don't have the brain power. Well, Ali, we're gonna make the car go like the caballo, the vaquero, and the stars. It took time. It took positive energy. Don't let people tell you that's wrong. You don't want to go to school, that's fine. Do something productive with your life. There's nothing wrong with this. Some of your parents do work at these factories. Some of your parents are farmers. So de la pizca. You know what? They're not hurting nobody. You know what? The people that talk about, oh, let's go green life and I'm a vegan. Well, what do you think they go get the salads and the tomatoes that these people picked at the grocery store? It's like some people, like Americans, like get mad because like supposedly Mexicans are taking their jobs and like it's Mexicans are doing the jobs that they don't want to do. You know, without Mexicans, they would probably not even get their food elements at all. And you're correct in saying that. <laughs> but the way we become positive on that is to sit down with that man or that woman and say, Mira, those people that want to come over here and commit crimes, let's deport them. Those people that want to come here and want a better life for themselves, because in Tendal, this country was built on immigration. It was built on immigration. But there's a way to do it legally. And we need to figure out how to do that without having our people and other people getting deported. Because you are correct. You know, that's why I say, if five years from now, this is where you end up, there is nothing wrong with that. This country was built on laborers. I fought for a cause that had no meaning. 50 years ago, you could not sit here and your people were marching. Our people were outside in some shack over there. These people fought for your civil liberties. Who are you going to choose? The gangsters that want to fight all the pelea por mi barrio and mi gente. No, no, no. They fought for the barrios and the gente. Women like Luisa Moreno, Huerta, Morales, Corky, no Corky's over there, Mantes, and Cesar. Look who Cesar Chavez is sitting with. John F. Kennedy. You know any gangsters sitting with uh, President Obama right now? Do not tell me that you do not have people that you can idolize. This vato, Paul Rodriguez Jr., the son of comedian Paul Rodriguez, he didn't go to school, and that's okay. But he found a talent. He was good with the skateboard. He is the first. Hispanic, Latino, Chicano, Mestizo to get a multi-million dollar endorsement from Nike. The first. Because he was good with a skateboard. He didn't shoot nobody. He didn't go to school. But he used his gifts and talents. Find the gift and talent that you're good at. John Quinones, reporter. Baby Bash, lyricist. J-Lo. The Guerrito know who he was looking at. Spice in there, like, oh. Over there, O'Brien. Mark Sanchez. Mira. Señoritas. Damitas. Y'all have all the power right now. We got a woman. Supreme Court Justice. Cubana. Sotomayor. You ladies can run for president now. Years ago, that was unheard of. Do not sell yourself short. Pick one. Myself 
and fellow student, Angelica Rodriguez, Freddie Miranda, who are more than happy to take you at the University of Northern Iowa. And if you say, you know what? I want to take small steps. Then you go with Elisa, and she'll help you through Haka, and you make your steps closer. I don't want to hear months from now that, what's her name, got locked up for drugs. I can got picked up with a pistol. Homegirl dropped out. I want to see this. How many freshmen I have in here? Hands high. I'm very proud of you. Because listen, you're just taking a step ahead of everybody else. What you need to do is continue on that step. Hey, like Jay-Z. Brush the haters off. Keep moving forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The haters off. <laughs> Stick to you. That's good. I'm very proud of you. I don't have to know you to tell you that, but you're already in the right direction. Sophomores, hands high. Really? You have time. Mistakes are retakes. Now it's time to get that degree. Because at the University of Northern Iowa, they're handing out grants and scholarships based on GPE, GPA. Because you do it with your mind, not with your hands not with your anger. You get your mind and your heart and you align them together and make them agree with themselves. And you prove yourself on paper. Yo soy alguien. No que quiero dar un cohete que dar a alguien. Una golpiza, yo soy alguien. What does that get you? Nowhere. Think about what I'm telling you. Remember what I said, single de mayo, seven months ago. <laughs> that ends this portion of the session. But I will share some things with you. This is a letter. And I need you to be careful with it. On this letter, it's got a number. I got somebody who's a gang member who's fixing to get out, who's writing. I just got this in August. Because I'm a former gang member, he's a gang member, they check the mail. They want to make sure we're not doing any legal stuff in the mail. Be very careful with this. That's all right. Hold on. This is what he writes. Dear Carnal, Roland. I'll tell you about that here in a minute. That's my middle name. Roland, from what I can tell, the people that were helping me out when we were sending the drugs out in fear, freer, Freer is a small town in Texas. They set me up. Now I gotta do eight years and three of them running concurrent. And hopefully I'll get parole. And when I do, I'll be back on my feet in no time. So I guess it's been pretty been a hard road for you. I hope your journey has been good to you, my friend. Don't give up the good fight, bro, because you will be somebody who makes a difference in others in this world. I got a vato that's locked up right now telling me I can make a difference. You know why? Because he can't even make a difference. He's locked up. How can he? I'm in here with the orejones, the tangos, and the tiras. Everybody's in here. I'm all by myself. I have no intentions of getting into the politics. I ride alone, and if I have to, I hold my own. And if I got to, I'll box anybody in here. This is what he says. If I have to, I'll box anybody in here. He's been put in a situation where he has to fight for his life every day. Academia, you ain't got to fight for nothing. You are who you are. Education saved my life. I'm speaking to you as a man with three holes in his body. I, ladies and gentlemen, should not be here. ¿Me entienden? Sí, señor. Listen, I got my mother who seven months after I shot myself, she had a massive heart attack. I talked to my tia. Tia says, Rolandito, your mom blames herself for abandoning you. So it hit her heart so much that she had a massive heart attack. My mom, 67 years old, got a tumor in her head, osteoporosis, heart disease, and as a prior quadruple heart bypass patient. I blame myself every day for that because I tried taking my own life. And you know what my mom tells me? My jefita, 
mi reina. Y dije, mi hijito, te tuvo que llevar con tu papá, te tuvo que quitar de tu papá porque tú debes estar en el mismo camino. I was going to take you away from your father because I didn't want you to follow the same road. Ironically, I did. I have to live every day of my life knowing that I put my mom in that situation. Choices and consequences. Understand that whatever you do and the decisions you make, if they are wrong, you're going to affect somebody else. No mother, no father, orale. And an uncle. No and an uncle, grandparents. No abuelitos, primos. No primos, okay, do it from the family. Friends, positive friends. Do not put yourself in a square where you get in a corner and you get stuck. Put yourself in a circle. So if you turn, you're no good out. You're no good out. You're good. What are you? Another circle. Another circle. Build you a circle that's positive in your life. No friends? Teacher. Counselor. Coach. Mentor. Advisor. Recruiter. Fellow peer. Student. Find somebody in your life that will make a difference, that will support you in what you want to do. I can sit here all day and tell you this story. I have a dream. This is my dream. And one day, I get to go work at the White House. And my job will be to go to every school across the country and do what I'm doing here to try to save some lives. So, you tell your principal and your counselor if you want. You tell them, you know what, uh, sir, I think it would be beneficial if we have Mr. Cantu come back and speak to the whole school. I will do it for free. I don't charge for mileage, I don't charge meals, I don't charge nothing. Why am I gonna charge to save a life when nobody charged me? Why? You know what that is? EBT card. EBT card. Who's that? What a name to that. There's nothing wrong with only one of these. So what if you're poor? So what if you're poor? There ain't nothing wrong with Kool-Aid. <laughs> toast, toast with a little butter with some sugar on it. Una tortilla con... There's nothing wrong with that. You have the power. You don't need nobody but yourself. Because you know what? Today, you can leave here today and say, I sat in a room for 55 minutes and I listened to somebody who should be involved. And if he made it, and I ain't got no O's in my body, I think I can make it too. But I gotta believe. You have to believe. Because if you don't believe, who's gonna do it for you? It's possible. I will give you my number. My number is my number for the whole year to go to you and I is $27,895.83. That's what I gotta pay. I just take tuition. But there ain't nothing coming out of my pockets. <coughs> Scholarships, grants. I pay more because I'm from out of state. This paper will allow you to see what you have access to. You understand? Can you see it again, please? What did you say? $27,895.83 out of state. Mr. Miranda is a director at the admissions for you and I. What is the in-state tuition, sir? Uh, seven thousand eighteen dollars. That's for a year. Yes, for semester. But if you look at that paper, it gives you grants. They ain't giving you grants to hold a gun, to deal drugs, to end up in violence, to do things that are harmful to the community, to yourself. They're giving you grants and scholarships. Brain power. What time do we leave from here? 1.45.
It's called question and answer. Don't ask me the question about what gang you're from. It's irrelevant. Question and answer. And I want you to raise your hands high and be proud to ask a question. No question is a wrong question. Answer it. I'll how get back to you. How do you reach it so you can come speak to us? Okay, look, if you want a card, I'll give you one. But this is the thing. It is unethical for you to call me. I need a counselor, principal, a professional to contact me. You can't just be calling me. That doesn't work that way. That's well, unethical. It's well, not professional. You know, and two different standards. You get them people to call me, no charge, no nothing. Give me a heads up, and I'll roll up. I'll roll up. Understand that I'm taking 18 hours a semester. People don't know how I'll do it. They think I'm a robot. Sleeping three, four hour days. I stayed up till four this morning to make sure the PowerPoint was catering to you, because I just came from Moline, Illinois. State of Iowa has the potential to become the next Illinois. We ain't saying Illinois is bad. Illinois is a beautiful place. It's got problems. It needs to be fixed. Your generation can start to fix it. Have your principal counselor, professional contact me, email, via cell phone. If you try to contact me, I gotta, I just can't answer. Questions? I'll have to screen that call. Questions? No, no, listen. We well, didn't pay that much money, but you paid. You didn't pay anything. This is my kind of I have a 2010 Ford Fusion. Oh. Brand new. What color? Any other questions? Are you no. I am uh, 34 years old. And I currently have a person of interest, we'll say, who is 11 years younger than I. Now, listen to me, gentlemen and ladies. She chased me. <laughs> Seriously. Because I thought because I was too old for her, or maybe we didn't have enough in common. But we attended, OK? Understand this. When we go to eat, I open the door for her. Aww. When we're at the restaurant, she gets up to go to the restroom, I stand up. Caballero, vaquero, gentlemen, if her skirt's a little high, lower it a little bit. Because you treat that woman with class and respect. Just because she got a skirt a little high, don't mean she a skank a whole slut. You got to address her and say, look, you're looking very nice today. I'm going to skirt a little bit. Why are you going to dog her? Why are you going to hate her? Because ladies, y'all do that to each other. She can look whacked out the whole week, and on Friday, she did her hair. <laughs> she like she is. <laughs> don't go to her beauty salon. <laughs> The number one hater is the people that you're with. The number one hater. There ain't nothing wrong with hip hop. But listen, there ain't nothing wrong with hip hop and corridos. But this is the problem with that. It's creating a trend that's false. 50 Cent got shot nine times and he survived. But 50 Cent ain't dealing drugs and he ain't shooting nobody. He's using his voice to make millions of dollars. And at the same time, he's donating charity. Los Tigres del Norte no andan matando gente, but they're singing about it and making millions. Do you understand? Use your voice, it has power. Behind every rapper or lyricist, there's a promoter. Advertising, marketing, mixing, studio, musician. It's an art. 
tone of vulgarity now. I am from the gutter. I know what it's like to be a failure. When you're out in the front yard and you sweep in the trash, la basura, la calle. Leave it in the streets. Hold yourself up with integrity and respect. Watch what you say. Practice it. I love my mother to death, and I will do anything for my mother. That's all I got. I'm a bastard, but I'm a proud bastard. Because like I said, you don't need a whole tribe. You just need one to back you up. And what you said, I'll back you up, and you did. This is all I got from my father. I can't pass this around because it's too fragile. He's social security card. That's it. I would love to bring up the phone and say, hey, Dad, I remember when you're in the suits and you're doing wrong things. And I didn't know that, but now I'm in the suit and I'm doing the right thing. But I can't pick up the phone and call. This is all I got. You know what I'm saying? Me entienden? Yeah. So you need to be careful how you treat your parents. Because one day you might not have them. And one day you cannot let them know that you turned their life around. You need to be mindful of what you're doing. Be proud of who you are. Find a gift and a talent it don't matter who's hating. As long as it's positive, productive, and it's not hurting anybody, it's all love. Puro amor. Puro amor. La vida es preciosa. Your life's precious. You don't have to become a statistic. You can break that cycle. But you have to take ownership of who you are. I'm gonna keep you for a couple of more minutes. So we start again, and that's all right. That's all right, because I told you, you're gonna leave for me with something. El corazón tiene más poder que mano. You can be angry and hate the world and isolate it. You can probably do what I did and try to take your own life. But for some reason, I just put a key. For some reason, I was brought here today to speak to you because I have a message for you. Salud. Entienden? Any other questions? I haven't heard from my dad since 1983. If my father would be alive, he would be 77 years old. And I have not told my mother this, but uh, as soon as I graduate, God willing, from the University of Northern Iowa, that summer, which is eight months from now, I'm gonna go try and find him. If he's alive, he'd be 77. My dad was a very tough man very uh, powerful man, but he can be powerful too. But you have to define the power. What is powerful to you? Making good grades, contacting Mr. Miranda, hey, you know what? What, about, what can I do to get to you and I? Elisa, you know, I want to get away from home, and I don't want to go too far, but how can I get into Hawkeye? You don't know, you don't ask. If you don't ask, you don't know. It's like a good olla de menudo. Tiene mucho jale. And you're there going bowl after bowl after bowl, orale. Why well, do you know what's in the menu? <laughs> that gumbo, brother. Gotta <laughs> <laughs> taste it. Gotta taste it. Menudo's gumbo. It's the same thing. 
pero de otras palabras, de otra cultura. Yeah. Questions? We've got about two minutes left. Yes, ma'am. Um, how did you do to get your father's social security? One more time. Your father's social security. How, how did you get how it? How did you get it? Ah, that's a very good question. I found it in an old drawer in my grandmother's house. This is my mom's house now. It was hidden. My mom doesn't know I have it. Because maybe she doesn't want me to find it. My father's. <laughs> They're going to look it up, but I'm not 77. I got canas, but I ain't that old. Any other questions? Come on. Gentlemen, respect is earned. Ladies, respect is given. Thanks too. Start with you. Start with you. Last time. Any other questions? Lady, yes, ma'am. Why is this so long? My sister's in Texas, who is my second mom. So when I do Mother's Day, I got to buy two gifts. <laughs> my biological mother and my sister. So when my mom leaves this earth, I'll still have a mom. Um, I will say this. I put a lot, through, I put my sister through a lot. But she told me, you graduate, I will buy you a class ring. I'm trying to find the most expensive one I have. <laughs> Fill out the contact cards. Ah, uh, those evaluations, but right? mm -hmm. Fill out the contact cards. Leave the contact cards on the desk. You're going to get an evaluation sheet. Fill it out as quick as you can. And we'll go back to where we need to go. That's fine. You don't need to fill it out again. Just leave it on the desk. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for having me this afternoon.